My cousin had cerebral palsy. When I went around to play, he'd be waiting there by the letterbox in one of his superhero outfits his mum had made. He'd give me a big hug and leave a little dribble on my shoulder. And for some reason, he always smelt of licorice. The first thing he'd do was dress me up as a superhero as well. My auntie would take a photo of us and then make him take his pills. He took three little blue ones and two big grey ones, which he'd gulp down without any water. He told me they gave him superpowers and he'd tried to prove it by dragging me onto the chook shed roof where we'd attempt to fly. <laughs> he had a lot of pets. He'd show me his new ones and where he buried the old ones. I was jealous of all the things he had. I thought he was spoiled. He sat down when he did a wee. Mum said he was allowed to. His left arm wasn't attached to his brain, which floated around and had a mind of its own. Sometimes my auntie would pin it to his side to help control it. His other arm was very strong. Playing cricket with him was dangerous. Once he swung the bat so hard it flew and hit my uncle in the neck. And he had to wear a neck brace for a month. Sometimes we'd play in the street he had an old shopping trolley we'd roll in down hills. And one time a gang of kids tried to get it from us. One of them called my cousin a spazzo and mimicked him. My cousin broke his finger and he ran off screaming. My cousin thought it was funny. But he didn't always laugh. He'd often get angry, frustrated and violent, screaming and flinging himself about. Once I watched him punch a hole in the wall, but my auntie knew what to do. She'd grab him, look him in the eyes and say, bake a cake. He'd calm right down and begin to measure, pour and mix, waiting for the best bit at the end, when he could decorate however he liked. He had to be occupied. He liked collecting things and counting them. He had 34 t-shirts and had a favourite. He made pet rocks and named them after people he knew. He was very creative. And if he wasn't drawing, he'd be putting together jigsaw puzzles or playing board games. Once he ate the letter E. E is for eat, he said. But the thing he liked doing more than anything else was swimming. He liked to sink to the bottom and everyone was unsure whether he was drowning. I think things were better down there. On my eighth birthday, his parents were killed in a car accident, and he was moved to a foster home in another state. Over the years, I talked to him whenever I could, but we grew older and slowly lost contact. I think I saw him the other day at a shopping centre, collecting trolleys. But I didn't go up to him, I just watched him moving about, hoping he was happy, and wondering if he still smelt of licorice.